Kat at Haynes Physical Therapy and today I'm going to talk to you about thoracic outlet syndrome or what we commonly call TOS. So thoracic outlet syndrome basically refers to a compression of some neurovascular structures that exit your thoracic outlet. So your thoracic outlet, if you will, is basically just a passage made of different structures that kind of is in the neck area, a little bit at the front of the shoulder here. Um, but basically what happens is you get some compression in this area which will give you symptoms further down. Clinically, a lot of what we see, um, not all the time, but um, with TOS, people are going to have numbness, tingling, shooting type pain, and it's typically over here, kind of on this side of the hand. A couple important structures are in that thoracic outlet. So some of those include your subclavian artery and vein, so some blood vessels along with your brachial plexus, which is basically a big nerve bundle that kind of stems from the spinal cord, lower cervical, um, area and it comes across. It sends signals into the shoulder, the arm, all the way down into the hand, which is why you'll get these symptoms down here. Uh, commonly, another finding we'll have is that sometimes people who have these issues tend to sleep in this position on top of the arm with it overhead. You can even have a fall uh, with the arm in that position or you can sleep kind of forward, curled up with that shoulder protracted. So there's a lot of things you can do in the clinic, um, a lot more than what I can show you in this video if you actually go somewhere and find a good PT. Um, but I'll show you a couple things that you can do to help with these symptoms in the event that you start experiencing them at home. Okay, so back to that brachial plexus, um, that nerve bundle. There are, are three main nerves that kind of run from that all the way down to the hand. Um, those being your ulnar nerve, your radial nerve, and your median nerve. So that ulnar nerve is kind of your funny bone nerve that we all tend to kind of bang right there on the elbow when you get that stuff into your pinky and ring finger. Um, just a disclaimer with these, so I'm going to show you some nerve glides or nerve flossing techniques. So these are really gentle. What you don't want to do is immediately jump into stretching a nerve or pushing into pain that can actually flare up or irritate your symptoms. So the first time you do these, I just want you to do 10 and not push beyond that. And even when you're doing them, like don't be really aggressive, be super, super gentle. So I'd probably just do 10 of each of what I'm gonna show you um, and just see how you feel after that and into the next day before trying to step anything up. Um, so we'll go through these and then we'll also show you a way to kind of progress them into a nerve tensioner, which is more of a stretch. Uh, we don't wanna start there though, so let's go ahead and talk about a nerve glide, starting with that first guy, the ulnar nerve. So this one, you get to feel a little bit fancy, like you're sipping tea, pinky up. Um, but basically what you're doing is, kind of like Tyler's showing us here, you're going to come back until you get a little bit of a pull, if you do get a pull, kind of into this area, the pinky and that side of the hand. So yep, you'll just get 10 of these, kind of coming back and forth really gently. Make sure to kind of keep your neck in neutral so you're facing forward. Perfect. So you sip tea 10 times. And then um, later down the road when you're not flared up and if you want to kind of get more of a stretch or do a nerve tensioner, you can kind of do this bird man sign. So you're going to come all the way up like this. You should be getting a pretty good pull with this one. And you're going to hold three times 30 seconds. So that is your ulnar nerve. And then what you can do is also get after that radial nerve. So this one, you kind of do this waiter's tip position. So you might want to actually stand for that one. Yep, you got it. Yep, so as you can see, he's kind of got his hand backwards like he's about to get a tip. And then you basically just kind of reach back until you get a little bit of a pull. Same thing, try and keep that neck in neutral. So perfect. Yeah, you got it. So 10, nice and easy of those, so you get a very gentle pull. And then what you want to do, um, if you want to get a little bit more of a tensioner or a stretch out of it is a couple ways. You can either go back to that tension position here or you can even get against a wall um, just to kind of prop this guy up and stabilize it. And then what you do once you have that stabilized is you're going to side bend at the neck away. And you're too tall, skip that. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to come here and then side bend away. Perfect. So whenever you get to these tensioners or the stretches, you're going to do three times 30 seconds if you can tolerate that. And yeah, perfect. Okay, so that was your ulnar nerve, your radial nerve. Um, let's talk about your median nerve. So this is that carpal tunnel nerve, or that's how most people hear about the median nerve. But for this one, if you want to do um, nerve glides, a mobilization type deal, what you're gonna do is essentially kinda come up like you're carrying a tray or something. Probably, yeah, right about there. 
And then what you want to do is pretend that a string is attached from your head over to your wrist. So whenever that arm comes down, you're going to take the head with it and then come on back. So you're going to try and repeat that very gently 10 times. Again, you don't want to push into pain or anything. Basically just threading that nerve through all of those structures. Perfect. Okay. So we got that. So on the flip side, once we want to jump to a tensioner, um, get a little bit of a stretch out of it. What we can do here is kind of similar to what we did with the radial. If you want, you can get, you know, on a wall and kind of stabilize that hand there. Yeah, so you want to try to keep that in extension. And then what you're going to do is side bend away. Right there. You feeling it? Yeah, okay. And you should get a pretty good little burn there. Um, but again, I wouldn't start with those. I would start with the um, nerve glides. So those are three things along with progressions that you can do as far as those uh, nerve goes and getting those moving and mobile. Um, but another thing that you can do is address posture. That is huge because typically people are in this position, but we need to get them to this position. Yeah, that's it. So what you can do is if you do have one of these little deals, it's just a foam roll that's kind of cut in half and wrapped in duct tape, very fancy technology. Or you can get um, a towel just rolled up, basically just something to kind of get on. What you wanna do is get this and then line it up with the center of the spine. So you can lay it down somewhere, get on this guy, and then basically you just chill out. So hands down, good. And then you just hang out here for two minutes. So what this is doing essentially is kind of opening up those spaces and helping us out with that compression that's going on. So. There's a lot more that you can do, you know, if you're in the clinic with a PT, but these are a couple things that will hopefully get you started and get you some relief from your symptoms. Okay. <laughs>